Welcome to Unity with Pam, with your host, Pam Willis Hovey. Hello, and welcome to another special edition of Unity. We are here in Atlanta, Georgia, with U.S. Senate for candidate elect Art Gardner. I want to go ahead and say, welcome to Unity. Well, thanks for having me. Well, you've got a lot of things going. You're an attorney, and you're also aspiring to be U.S. Senate candidate. Give my viewers a little bit about your background. Well, I've been an attorney for 25 years. I practice intellectual property law. I have my own firm that I started 18 years ago. Prior to becoming a patent attorney, I was a manufacturing engineer for Lockheed. Did that for five years while I went to law school at night. And prior to that, I was a German car mechanic for 10 years. So I've been working over 40 years now full time. Started working full time when I was uh, 14 years old. I worked full time even through high school even during the school year itself. So I'm, I'm sort of used to working. You know, you talk about a lot of different career changes. A mechanic, I like cars too. How did you get from doing mechanics to law? Uh, it was sort of a natural progression for me because uh, I was a mechanic and I liked, I liked understanding how things worked. That led me to uh, Georgia Tech in an engineering school. I was a very good student. And so when you combine uh, good academics with uh, liking and understanding how things work, uh, it was a natural that I went into engineering. And from engineering school, uh, when I was in at tech, I, was, uh, I took a test, an aptitude and interest test, that said that my number one aptitude was in business, my number two aptitude was in law, my number three aptitude was in engineering. My number one interest was in business. My number two interest was in law. My number three interest was in engineering. So that got me thinking, oh, gee, maybe I should combine engineering with the law. And that sort of led me to patent law. And so when I went to law school, I, I attended law school specifically with the idea of becoming a patent attorney. Then I want to ask you something, too, because there's so many people, and you see commercials talking about if you want to patent this, call so-and-so-and-so. -and -so. You know, how do people know when to look for that right person to patent something? If you've got an idea that's patentable or that you think is a, an invention that can be sold well, just seek out a patent attorney. A patent attorney will be able to guide you. So I would caution people to be careful about invention companies, but instead seek out a patent attorney here in Georgia. There are lots of very good patent attorneys here in Georgia. What makes your firm stand out? Everybody has their own niche. So what makes you stand out? We designed our firm to, to uh, allow the lawyers to make a comfortable living while still being home for dinner every night. Mm -hmm. Typically, big law firms are run on the, on the basis of requiring the lawyers to work a large number of hours, a lot of hours. And it uh, really interferes with family life. And we decided we didn't want to do that. We, we wanted to draw or make a balance more towards uh, family life. And so we've lowered our income expectations, lowered our billing requirements, kept our overhead low, and managed to make a living and, and still be home for dinner at night, be, be able to be a scout leader and a ball coach and all those kinds of things, which a lot of times lawyers are not able to do. One thing you talked about was family, and I'm big on family too. So you, you're married and yes. have children. Tell my viewers a little bit about your wife and your family and how you're able to balance everything. I've been married for 32 years, met my wife at Georgia Tech. We have three children, adult uh, identical twin son boys who are 25. One lives in Alaska and the other is finishing up college at Kennesaw State. Then we have an 18-year-old daughter who will be 19 next week and she's a freshman at Mississippi State over in Starkville. So, uh, so yeah, we're very happy, very blessed with our children. So now you're adding something else to your plate, politics. So now how are you going to do family, politics, and run for office? Well, I mean, I'm sort of used to working hard and doing multiple things at once. But with the children being out of the house, my, my boys have, are grown and moved out. My daughter is now in college. so. I don't have any children at home, so we're sort of empty, empty nesters. We are empty nesters, so all it's just my wife and the dog and I. So it, uh, it frees me up to work as much as I need to on the campaign. And I have to draw uh, a balance between doing my, my work for my clients and also uh, 
doing the campaign, and both of them require uh, nearly full-time effort. They do. But I'm, I've demonstrated in my life that I'm capable of doing just that, so I'm enjoying it. Well, tell people what's your platform going to be about. Well, first of all, I'm a mainstream candidate that Georgians can be proud of, and I'm out to fix the budget. That's, that's my number one thing. We have a serious budget problem in this country. We're spending way more money than we're taking in at the federal government. And if we don't fix that, it's going to ruin the, ruin the whole system and could bring down, bring down the system. So we need to preserve what we have by fixing the budget. Secondly, I want to restore what I call normal bipartisanship. Politics inherently requires the two parties, the, the Democrats yeah. and the Republicans, to work together to compromise, to find bipartisan solutions that everybody can get behind, and not just it's my way or the highway, which seems to be the, the way things have done, been done lately. So I want to I wanna restore normal bipartisanship. Well, that's the second thing that I'm, I'm really campaigning for. The third thing is, is I want to I wanna protect individual rights and, and maintain individual responsibility. And a lot of politicians are more interested in uh, currying favor with certain groups and trying to promote culture wars as a way to get votes, and that, that's I just not what I'm all about. So you're about bringing some unity into it. I think so. Yes. Yes. And you also talked about fixing the budget. What are some things in the budget you feel needs to be fixed? First of all, you have to understand where do we spend the money. The government spends the tax money that it takes in on five things. First of all, we spend about about 20 percent of the federal spending goes to defense. About 20 percent goes to non-defense domestic spending, things like the Congress and the EPA and the FBI and building bridges and roads and those kinds of things. About 20 percent goes to all forms of welfare, and I don't just mean for people, but for companies, mm -hmm. farmers, all kinds of welfare. The, another 20 percent goes to Medicare, Medicaid, and another 20 percent goes to Social Security. So about 60 percent of the federal spending goes to what people call mandatory spending, Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. So right now, we're in the last several years, we've been overspending by quite a bit, by you know 30 percent. So we've got a serious problem. It's so serious that you couldn't eliminate the Defense Department completely and still balance the budget. So we're going to have to make cuts sort of across the board. Really. To be fair about it. Well, not only to be fair, but to, to be effective. Um, and uh, fairness certainly comes into play, but it's, it's, not, it's not a matter of we're spending too much just on this one program and all the others are fine. We're spending too much across the board. So the only realistic way to do it is through you know, cuts in spending everywhere. And I was very much opposed to this recent budget deal. I was very happy that they made a bipartisan deal. That was great. We very much need that. But the deal that they made was to restore defense spending and domestic spending virtually to to full funding, and that'll make it very difficult to address the mandatory spending, which is the, where most of the problem is, because that's where most of the spending is. Well, Mr. Art, I want to say thank you so much for doing my show. We're going to commercial break, then we're coming back with some of the scholars from Wesley Heights to interview Mr. Art Gardner. He's running for U.S. Senate. For more than 60 years, the Dairy Queen recipe for success has been simple. It's been a combination of hardworking people, great tasting food, and tempting treats served in our establishments every day. Although a lot has changed in 60 years, some things remain the same. The smiles on children's faces, a treat for a good report card, close friends enjoying a great meal, and families spending quality time together. Here at DQ, we are always committed to treat you right. Welcome you to be a part of our ministry. This is not a put on, but this is a come on. And we come to share in our different ministries with our dance team, with our choir, and our TV ministry. 
And we're looking for great things to happen, great miracles to happen within this great thing to happen, great miracles to happen within this place. Come and be a part of the blessing plan. Welcome back to, to Unity with Pam. I am Jamia bringing you the interview with Mr. Art Garden. Mr. Garden, do you mind if I ask you any questions? Feel free. I want to be a lawyer someday. How would you give me some advice? Well, if you want to be a lawyer, first thing to do is do your very best in school. So stay in school, study hard, make good grades and then go to college. And when you go to college, do well in college because you're going you're gonna to need good credentials to get into a good law school. And what can happen sometimes with people is that they fail to do the preparatory work to put themselves in a position to attend either a law school or engineering school or something that they, in their mind, that is a dream of theirs, but they haven't, they haven't done the work at the beginning to put themselves in a position to do that later. So that, that would be my advice. How old were you when you became a lawyer? I was 30. I was 30 when I graduated from law school. And at that point, I had been in school for a long time, 24 years or something. What does a patent lawyer do? As a patent lawyer, we, we help people to evaluate their invention to figure out is it patentable or not. Can they get protection from the government for it? And so we'll figure out. Is there some, has someone already done something like this? And if, it, if not, then how could we patent it? And what features would we be able to protect and develop a plan and then go forward maybe with a patent application that we would prepare from scratch, file the application at the patent office for the inventor, and then what we call prosecute it, which is to represent the client in the patent office over the next two or three years and turn that into an issued patent. That's, that's what we do mostly. Who was your role model? Uh, I, would, I would have to say my parents, I guess. My dad's very hardworking and uh, was an entrepreneur sort of person that even in high school started his own businesses. Um, and very hardworking, uh, very fearless, uh, very much self-reliant. And my mother was uh, also a hardworking person, more, more of an intellectual. And uh, between the two of them, I guess those are my role models. What is your favorite hobby? Favorite hobby? Well, I like to restore antique Cadillacs. So I, 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 when I'm not working or doing something with the family, I'm often under the hood of a, an old Cadillac somewhere between 1949 and 1956 is the years that I like to focus on. So I really, I really like working on cars. Do you have wife and kids? Yep, been married 32 years. Met my wife Anita at Georgia Tech. And uh, we have three children, identical twin sons who are 25 years old. And then our daughter is 18, soon to be 19 years old. She's a freshman at Mississippi State. Where did you grow up? Um, I grew up in Florida and came to school here at Georgia Tech. Did you, did you ever have doubts about cases? Doubts about cases. Yeah, sometimes people uh, want you to represent them in a lawsuit and, and their, their cause, if you will, their cause of action maybe is not the strongest. So yeah, that happens from time to time. You try to, try to counsel those people that, look, you know, you, technically you can bring the case, but maybe you shouldn't. What? Do you win, do you mostly win all your cases? No, I don't win them all. I've been very fortunate. I've won most of my cases, but nobody wins them all. After this commercial break, we'll have another scholar from West of the Heights interview Mr. Gardner. Is it possible to have a love-love relationship with your cable company? What if they were a different kind of cable company, starting with not asking you to sign a contract? What if they actually listened to what you need, instead of trying to sell you something you don't? And let's say they backed up their service with a money-back guarantee. Just to be crazy, let's say this cable company was made up of happy people who treated you like an actual human being. We're WOW, and we'd like to change the way you feel about cable companies.
Hi, my name is Tyra Anderson, and I'm interviewing Mr. Art Gardner. Is it okay with you if I ask you a few questions? Sure. How was your job as a lawyer? Well, I'm a patent lawyer, so we help people with inventions. That means that I spend most of my time uh, dealing with, with technology and trying to figure out how some new machine or new product works. And if you like to understand how technology works, it's a great job. Um, it's great for me. It would not be for everybody. Some people wouldn't, uh, wouldn't care to spend their time understanding how things work, but for me, it's wonderful. Have you ever helped a client sell their product? Yes, I have. Yes, I've helped clients uh, sell their, their patent rights. We don't typically get involved in helping them market the product per se, but we, we have helped clients sell their patent rights, yes. Has your job ever put you in a dangerous position? No, my, my work as a lawyer has never put me in a dangerous, dangerous position, no. How does your past experience as a mechanic relate to your job? Uh, very well, actually, because I learned a lot about how things work as a mechanic. And I, I find that I use the terminology from, from auto mechanics in my job all the time. So actually, it's, a, it's very good background work for, for being a patent attorney, surprisingly so. What inspired you to become a lawyer? Uh, when I was at Georgia Tech studying engineering, I took a battery of uh, interest and aptitude exams and it said that uh, maybe I should become an attorney and so that started me thinking about the law and I, I found that if I would pursue patent law that I could combine my engineering education that I was then pursuing with uh, the law and that's that's what led me to patent law. Can you, can you please explain more about your job as a lawyer? Well as, as a lawyer we help we help people with problems so uh, one of the one of the problems would be say someone's invented something new and they've got a patent and someone else is is stealing the idea somebody else is making the same product and and not respecting that person's patent we we help them with that so we'll represent them in court and go after the uh, the person that's or company that's that's making the knockoff so we we do we do a lot of that i really enjoy that kind of work when you were a mechanic, do, did you learn new things? Constantly, constantly. And um, I really liked being a mechanic. I was, I was a good mechanic. And it was good, it was good honest work. And I didn't mind getting dirty. Uh, I liked understanding how the, the cars worked. And um, you'll find that cars from different eras and from different countries are the technology that's in them is slightly different, and I really enjoyed learning those, those technology differences. That was fascinating to me. Have you ever taught your children how to, you know, use mechanical tools? My children were not terribly interested in that. So, you know, I, I tried to get them interested in, in uh, auto mechanics, but as, as sometimes occurs, children go their own way. They were not interested in the things that I'm interested in. After, after this commercial break, we will have another scholar from Wesley Heights Elementary School host uh, the same guest. Are you looking for medical personnel? Global Diagnostic Services Incorporated specializes in the placement of medical professionals. We place qualified temporary temp to perm or permanent candidates who are eager to become a part of your team. We are conveniently located in Conyers, Georgia. For more information, log on to www.globaldiagnostic.net. Medical professionals, do you have the desire to relocate? We also staff in other states. So give us a call. Global Diagnostic Services, managing the business of medicine. Hi, my name is Adrian Brown. Welcome back to Unity with Pam. Is it all right if I ask you a few questions? Sure. What inspired you to become a lawyer? Uh, well, I mean, I was an engineer, or actually in engineering school, when I, I decided that I would go to law school to become a patent attorney. And there's just, uh, just sort of occurred to me. Why didn't your father want you to go to college? My, my dad didn't want me to go to college because he, he thought that college education was a waste of time 
place the money. He, he wanted me to stay in the family business and remain as a mechanic and didn't want to lose me from the family business. So. How old were you when you became a lawyer? I was, I was 30 years old when I became a lawyer. And why did you become a mechanic? Uh, well, I, became a, I, I started working at the, the shop when I was 14. And uh, in, our, in our family, uh, the boys, once you started working in the family business, uh, you could eat a little better. So, <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, I, I started working in the family business at 14, and then uh, and I just sort of took to it naturally. I was, uh, I was always that sort of kid that would take things apart, take apart lawnmowers when I was 10 years old and put them back together. I was naturally good with my hands. And, figuring out how things work. So it was just a natural that I became a mechanic. How many cases have you settled for the past years? Uh, in lawsuits for clients, uh, gosh, probably, I don't know, probably resolved 50 or 100 cases uh, on the basis of a mutual, mutually satisfactory settlement. Maybe more than that. I don't, I don't, I don't keep track of it, but a lot. A lot of cases, a lot of cases. Do you inspire your kids to become a lawyer like you? I don't know. I mean, children, children do what they want to do. And uh, my dream is, is my dream, and my children's dreams are theirs. I, I don't know that any of my children would become a lawyer. Maybe one. I've got one that's talked about it a little bit. But uh, that's up to him. What does a patent lawyer do? Well, I'm a patent lawyer, and we, we help people with inventions. So we'll evaluate their, their new inventions and see if it looks patentable. And if it is patentable, try to get them a patent. How was your life being a lawyer and in in doing mechanic to you in life? Well, first of all, I've always liked working. So I liked working as a mechanic. I liked being an engineer. I, I liked both of those jobs very well. And I, I like being a, an attorney. The, um, the being an attorney, um, <laughs> some people think it's very prestigious, but for me, it's just it's just good, honest work. What is your favorite hobby? Well, I like working on cars still. So I like to keep my hands busy when I'm not sitting at a desk behind a computer. So I, I like working on cars, and, and I also like um, I like making furniture. Is the other other big hobby. Thank you for having having us scholars from Whistler Heights interview you today. Thank you for having us scholars interview you today at with at this place. Thank you. Unity with Pam is being brought to you by these great sponsors. Come into Chester's Barbecue for our world famous mouth watering ribs. Smoked fresh on our grill daily. Or try one of our barbecue pork plates with fresh sides. Chester's has delicious sandwich combos to choose from that are sure to please. We also serve tempting home-cooked favorites. And don't forget to take home your own bottle of great sauce. Chester's Barbecue, serving the best food at the best price. With three locations to serve you. Hello, welcome back to Unity with Pam. I'm your host, again, Pam willis Hovey, and I'm in Atlanta, Georgia with U.S. Senate candidate Art Gartner. Welcome to Unity again. Thanks so much for having me. Well, the primaries are coming up in May, and people need to know who you are once more. Tell them a little bit about your credentials. That makes you a tough candidate to beat. Well, I've been working in small business for almost 40 years. I was a mechanic for 10 years. I was an engineer for five years, and I've been in a patent attorney for 25 years, including uh, 23 years in small firms, 18 years in the firm that I founded. So I've, I've got almost 40 years uh, in small businesses, employing people. So I, I feel like I've got excellent credentials for the Senate seat. You see, you bring a lot to the table. And one thing my mother asked, should you win this? What's going to be the first thing you do? What's going to be first on your agenda? If I'm elected to the Senate, the first thing I'm going to do is reach out to the Democrats and let them understand that we are not enemies. We are partners in this thing we call government. 
and I'm going to try to build bridges with the, with the Democrats and establish as much of a rapport as possible because you don't get things done in Washington or in litigation by standing up in front of a television camera and calling somebody names. You get things done by mm -hmm. sitting down and working it out. And I've got a demonstrated history of working it out, and that's what I'll do with the Democrats. That doesn't mean that I'm going to compromise my principles. It means I'm going to look for common ground, things that we can all get behind for the betterment of the country. What are some things we can come together on? Well, we've, we've, we've got a number of things that we've got to address. But the first thing, the most important thing, is we've got to fix our spending problem. We're spending way too much money, much more than the government takes in. And if we don't fix it, it threatens the government. If we want, if we want things to continue, we've got to fix that spending problem. We can't keep spending like there's no tomorrow, or else there will be no tomorrow. One thing I want to ask you, I've got one minute. If somebody's watching this program and they say, you know what, Art, I like what you have to say. I like what you're doing. How can I get involved with your campaign? Well, first of all, they can go to my, my website at GardnerSenate.com and get involved there. They can sign up to volunteer to help us. They can contribute on our website. Uh, they can help us organize events, uh, find speaking opportunities for us, connect us with other people who want to hear the same message. And also, when are you going to be in Columbus real quick? I'm going to be in Columbus on January the 9th. I'm going to spend the whole day in Columbus and that evening as well. I've got some campaign events down there. So this, the timing of this is excellent. Well, I want to tell you, Mr. Art, thank you so much for doing my show. Thank you so much for having the children. And always show love in the community. For over 25 years, the Bug Patrol at All-Star Pest Control has protected thousands of families' homes from pests and rodents. Although most treatments have no odor and are environmentally friendly, our high-technology products and methods get absolute results. And we guarantee it! All-Star Pest Control, over 25 years of guaranteed protection. Is it possible to have a love-love relationship with your cable company? What if they were a different kind of cable company, starting with not asking you to sign a contract? What if they actually listened to what you need, instead of trying to sell you something you don't? And let's say they backed up their service with a money-back guarantee. Just to be crazy, let's say this cable company was made up of happy people who treated you like an actual human being. We're wow. And we'd like to change the way you feel about cable companies. Thank you for watching Unity with Pam. If you would like to be a sponsor, please contact us or visit unitywithpam.org. Production for Unity with Pam is provided by Atmotion Media Incorporated.